What's up guys? Thanks for coming to Gaming Canada with me. The homebrew scene has been pretty quiet for the last few weeks, but in recent days, some cool things have happened, so let's get ready for This Week in Homebrew. Keep watching. First up, we're over here on GBA Temp, and you can see Joel16 has created a new program, which is currently a work in progress called Friend Me. Now, Friend Me is the first ever open source 3DS homebrew to make use of the 3DS's friend service. So this is essentially an open source replacement for the friends list on your Nintendo 3DS. You can see here's a little bit of a screenshot of it. Looks pretty clean, nice little UI. And you can see it displays the username, displays comment, displays online status, hide status, hide title status, friend code, your favorite game, displays data, time, battery, etc. You can also take a screenshot by pressing L and R. I will also put a link to the GitHub in the description in case you wanted to go check it out. The only problem with FriendMe is I'm probably not going to be able to use it as I am currently banned, but I could see this being instrumental in the future if the 3DS's online service gets terminated, which it probably will in the next couple of years, and we end up creating our own homebrew version, then this could may very well be the replacement for the friends list, and this might be the way that you would add friends and access them in the future. I'm currently not sure if that would even be possible. I'm just throwing Throwing out ideas. Up next, we're over on GitHub and there's an update to PKSM. Now it's got a bunch of stuff that if I read doesn't really make too much sense, so go ahead and read it. If you use PKSM, maybe you'll understand it a bit more. The main thing that I want to talk about here is now all the PKSM related tools have been moved to a separate repository and it's now called PKSM Tools. So you can see the mystery gift dumping, Pokemon Homebrew Bank to PKSM converter, as well as the serve legality checker is now in PKSM Tools. So now if you want to go ahead and check wirelessly if your Pokemon are legal, then you can go ahead and use PKSM tools and it will send them back legal if they happen to have something wrong. Pretty cool little feature. Like I said, I'll put links in the description. Here it is over here. Quick little screenshot of it. Simple, simple little thing. Pretty cool though. Up next is a pretty significant update to Anemone. Now this allows you to use a bunch of new stuff for splash screens and kind of puts it on par with the theme half of the application. Now if you don't know what Anemone is, it is essentially the most supported 3DS theme manager in the homebrew community at the moment as Themely has pretty much been dumped to the wayside and CHMM2 is CHMM2 and that is enough reason not to use it. If you guys were interested in getting splash screens going you can see this update adds supports for splashes being stored as zips rather than folders so you can save a little bit of space on your SD card also added splash previews which was missing from the previous build as well as a pretty important one splash QR code installation so now you can go over to themeplaza.eu and install splash screens right from a QR code that is absolutely awesome now because of this current splash screen QR code installation the create Creator is no longer recommending you use 3D themes and you're going to go ahead and use themeplaza.eu. Now if you've been following the channel you're probably already using themeplaza.eu as it's about to be the next greatest and biggest theme site out there as well as having splash screens and soon to have boot animations as well. Links in the description. On to the next one. Up next is a simple little update to FBI. Now in the last homebrew weekly video I showed you how you can update to the newest version of FBI within FBI itself. Basically just open up the app and at the very bottom it'll say update. Go ahead and hit it. That'll work on the CIA version or it'll work on the 3DSX version if you're in homebrew. Up next is a little post over on Nintendo's Twitter and it was in Japanese but basically roughly translated it said that they were ending the online support for the Flipnote Studio 3DS. Now USA didn't ever have any online for this and I don't believe it's going to be affecting last hacks but if you haven't gotten Flipnote Studio 3D, I highly recommend going and downloading it right now so you'll be ready in case Nintendo does any weird stuff and removes our ability to get Flipnote Studio 3DS. I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description to a video regarding that in case you wanted to learn a little bit more information about Last Hacks.
Back over on GBA temp with a new release slash tutorial, which is pretty darn cool, but it almost kind of doesn't serve a purpose at this point in time. Although it is still pretty awesome and maybe one day will replace the 3DS dog guide, but not likely. So if you are on version 9.0 to 11.3, of your 3DS, 2DS, old 3DS, then you can go ahead and use OCS, which is one click setup. And essentially you just install three files on your SD card and then the program automatically installs FBI, Anemone, DSP1, God Mode 9, and Luma Updater. Pretty freaking awesome. You basically just boot into Sound Hacks and then launch Homebrew and then launch one click setup and the next thing you know, you have Boot9 Strap and custom firmware. There's a quick video here that you can watch showing someone getting custom firmware on their device in less than five minutes. So pretty darn cool and quite a step up in the homebrew community. Like I said, this isn't going to be officially supported by the 3ds.guide, I do not believe. So I'm still recommending you use the guide. But if you wanted to try this, I mean, it's there. I can't stop you. The last two things are just videos that I released earlier this week. There was an update to NDS Bootstrap version 0.6.0 and it allows TW Loader to now play Pokemon Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver, and Platinum. So if you got any interest in that, go check out that video. Also, the last thing for the 3DS news is there was an update to Boot 9 Strap version 1.3. Now go ahead and follow this video here if you're on Luma 8.0 or higher and on Bootstrap 1.2. If you're on a lower version, then go to the 3ds.guide for updating Boot 9 Strap. Do not follow this video. This has no real benefit for you to do other than just to be fully updated. Let's get on to the Wii U news. First up for the Wii U is a new how to soft mod your Wii U tutorial and this is part 8 revolving around SD Caffeine. Now SD Caffeine recently got an update that allows you to load multiple mods from an SD or a USB device. Now this is going to work on 5.5.2 or 5.5.1. So if you've been missing your mods on 5.5.2, please go ahead and check out this video. As you can see here, I have Aaron Itmar's Smash 4 mods loaded up and it absolutely looks awesome. Up next is maybe a little bit older news and hackers kind of knew about this for a while and that is that the Wii U's Miiverse and Wii U Chat as well as Nintendo TV are no longer going to be supported and they will be terminated fairly soon, seemingly as of November 8th. These last two Wii U stories are actually related and revolve around a pretty massive breakthrough in the homebrew community. As you can see here, it is now possible to inject a Wii ISO into a Wii U Virtual Console game. Now with the ability to play Wii games off of a hard drive from the virtual Wii, this doesn't serve much of a purpose to me, but it does have a pretty cool feature that allows you to use the Wii U gamepad to emulate the classic controller on your Wii games. Now this is a pretty long process to actually inject a Wii game into a virtual console game. So over here is a release, the Wii Virtual Console Injector Script. So this is a pretty amazing little tool that pretty much does all the work for you. And all you need is to have Java 8 installed, a clean game dump you wanna use, a couple of icons, and you're ready to go. There's even a video here demonstrating how to do it in around five minutes. So if you wanted to check that out, you could go ahead and do that and you'll probably be able to inject some Wii games into a virtual console game fairly easily. This program actually takes the Wii ISO and exports it to a fully packaged installer ready to go with Whoop Installer GX2. So once you're done running the script, all you got to do, put it on your SD card, go ahead and install it with Whoop Installer GX2, and you've got yourself a Wii Virtual Console game. I guess that's it for the news. I hope you guys enjoyed. As I said at the start of the video, slam that thumbs up. If you guys see anything you like, go down in the comments and let me know if you'll be using it or not. Much love. Peace.